Hey, there are things you can't erase and you know that. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down the plot points and character arcs that showrunners have reportedly said they wish they had never written. Since storylines are being discussed, you may encounter some spoilers ahead. Hello, darling. Number 10, the end credit visuals, Lost. Anyone who watched Lost knew the show was often packed with hidden details and clues. Y'all head to your heart of the island and I'll go get the magic leprechaun out of that well. If we leave a trail, can you catch up with us? Oh yeah, I can. So, fast forward to the series finale's end credits, and viewers are left staring at images of the deserted island, trying to figure out what it all means. Many fans wondered if this hinted that there had been no survivors all along. Yeah, I'm real. You're real. Everything that's ever happened to you is real. All those people in the church, they're all real too. However, it turns out this wasn't exactly the writer's idea. Network ABC added those scenes to help ease audiences out of the intense finale and into whatever was shown next. He, she said we were leaving. No, baby, no. Moving on. The showrunners were left disappointed by this decision since it overshadowed their emotional conclusion, where the characters finally come together in the afterlife. Number 9. Bob Dies – Stranger Things Stranger Things fans have learned not to get too attached to characters, a lesson the showrunners know too well. <clears throat> Chrissy. Another example is Joyce's beau, Bob Newby. Unfortunately, while trying to help Joyce and the others escape from the Hawkins lab, Bob gets caught by a pack of demodogs. Despite his valiant efforts, he sacrifices himself, giving the others time to flee. Listen, don't wait for me. As soon as I get those doors open. I'm gonna get them out. Yeah. I promise. Okay, hold on. It was gut-wrenching. Bob was a fan favourite, and we were rooting for his future with Joyce. Sean Astin and Winona Ryder were disappointed to see him go, as were the writers who reportedly kept delaying his fate. However, they teased that fans may still see him and Chrissy again. Number 8. Jack Swerves His Fate – This Is Us Early on, it's revealed that Jack Pearson, the family's patriarch, isn't around in the present day, but it takes time to explain what happened. In Season 1, Kate mentions feeling responsible for the tragic event. You remember when I told you I couldn't talk about my dad's death? Yeah, of course. You say, well, that's because it's my fault. A flashback shows Jack, who's struggling with alcohol use disorder and marital issues, calling his daughter before driving off. I wanted to tell you something. I, I, want, I, wanted, I wanted you to know that you were right. I'm going to fix things with your mom. I love you, Katie girl. As we know now, this is not how he passes away. Still, creator Dan Fogelman later regretted sending viewers off course since it took focus away from the key storylines like Jack and Rebecca's relationship struggles. Looking back, he believes that they should have just kept the story straightforward to keep viewers engaged with the real issues and evolving character dynamics. Because in the scariest moments of our lives, couldn't bear to disappoint me. Number 7. Running with the Zombie Virus – The Walking Dead Some TV series thrive on leaving viewers on the edge of their seats, eagerly anticipating that big, game-changing reveal. Why are you here? What do you want? A chance. Others, like The Walking Dead, charge straight ahead, as writer Robert Kirkman felt they did in the season 1 finale. In that pivotal episode, Rick discovers that the zombie virus has gone global, with no remedy in sight. They thought they were close to a solution. What happened? Same thing that's happening here. A power grid. Ran out of juice. Cue the collective gasp. Suddenly, our survivors are thrust into a world overrun by the undead. However, Kirkman had his doubts. Was this revelation too much, too soon? Perhaps diving into global chaos from the get-go was overwhelming for viewers, yet it didn't seem to hurt the series, which only continued to soar in popularity. Jenner told me. Whatever it is, we all carry it. Number 6. As We Know It – Grey's Anatomy It's a huge deal to have your series air after the Super Bowl, so you definitely want to make a bang. What's going on? Hannah? Um, my fingertips are touching something kind of hard. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Oh my god. Grey's Anatomy took that quite literally with a two episode storyline where Dr. Meredith Grey must remove an active explosive from a patient. The surgery goes well, but things take a turn when she hands the device to disposal expert Dylan Young, played by Kyle Chandler. Apparently, Chandler tried to suggest alternate ideas for his character, but the script had sealed his fate. Shonda Rhimes later admitted she regretted that decision, especially after casting Chandler. Still, whenever she feels pangs of remorse, she can remember that this gripping two-part episode earned her an Emmy nomination. If you knew this was your last day on Earth, how would you want to spend it? Number 5. The Damon Elena Stefan Love Triangle The Vampire Diaries No matter what TV series you watch, there will always be that couple you root for and hope will make it. Maybe it's in line with the writer's vision, and maybe it isn't, but we'd still like to believe they stand behind their decisions. He came into my life at a time when I needed someone and I fell for him instantly. No matter what I feel for you, I... I never unfell for him. Well, Stelena fans, listen up. Delana fans, you may want to cover your ears. Series developer Kevin Williamson revealed that he actually envisioned Stefan and Elena as Endgame. However, when Nina Dobrev left after season six, Elena had just gone back together with Damon. I love you, Damon Salvatore. Since she only returned for the finale, there wasn't enough time to rekindle things with Stefan. If she'd stuck around longer, who knows? Maybe things would have ended differently. Number four, Lexa dies, the hundred. You know a writer has second thoughts about their decisions when they pen an open letter of apology to the fans. Listen to me, now the upload has begun. All these people will be able to see us. We need to be more careful. The 100 series developer Jason Rothenberg did just that after the huge backlash over Lexa's death shortly after her romantic scene with Clark. Fans were heartbroken. They loved Lexa because she was such a deep and fascinating character who wasn't just defined by her sexuality. No, I am not letting you die. There's nothing you can do now. Rothenberg got that fans were angry about the age-old trope of killing off LGBTQIA plus characters and admitted that they messed up, even if it wasn't intentional. He also said there's still a lot of work to be done to improve inclusion on a broader scale. Safe passage on your travels until our final journey on the ground. May we meet again. Number three, Chandler's dad as a punchline. Friends. The younger generation couldn't be any less enthused with many of Friends' outdated storylines. It turns out that the writers agree with some of the criticism. Co-creator Marta Kaufman isn't too keen on the one with the chicken pox or the storyline where Phoebe dates her sister Stalker. Babes, this guy has been obsessed with your sister for God knows how long, okay? You don't just give up something like that. Look, he gave me his night vision goggles and everything. However, in maybe her biggest regret, Kaufman openly acknowledges mishandling intersex and transgender characters. She regrets elements like the infamous rumor in the Brad Pitt episode. All right, you know, fine. You guys are gonna have your stupid little club, but I would just like to say that what you did to me is way worse than what I did to you. And the comedic portrayal of Chandler's dad. In 2022, Kaufman said the character was misgendered and was indeed transgender. If Friends were made today, she'd likely insist on a more respectful representation of the LGBTQIA community. Nobody's going to be staring at the bride when the father of the groom is wearing a backless dress. <laughs> so what? And as long as he's not wearing a white dress and a veil, I don't care. Number two, Tara's shock ending, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is perhaps one of the most notorious examples of an LGBTQIA plus character facing an untimely death. Anything we can do to fast forward? We really need to find Warren and the others before anyone else gets hurt. Worse still, it was essentially only written to advance Willow's storyline. Also, having Tara meet her end by crossfire only adds to the injustice of it all. Your shirt. Tara? Fans were outraged, flooding the writers with letters of disappointment. Some were so upset, it turned them off of the series entirely. Marty Noxon, a showrunner in the later seasons, now thinks maybe it wasn't the best move. Tara was one of the few well-rounded LGBTQIA characters on TV back then, and a really likeable one at that. Looking back, Noxon wonders if killing her off was the right call at all. 
I command you, bring her back. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Jess's early story arc. Girls. Creator and star Lena Dunham voiced regret at introducing the character as a little too soulless. So just so you know what you just saw, that was me showing that I cannot be smoted. The Principal and the Pauper, The Simpsons. Series creator Matt Groening called the episode a mistake and noted its way off his list of favourites. I'm an imposter. That man is the real Seymour Skinner. <gasps> Johnny's unreciprocated love for Marissa, the OC. Creator Josh Schwartz admitted he'd want a do-over on how it all ended. After all we've been through, I get to be your best friend. Just go away. Leave me alone. Come on, just let me explain it to you. Look, just come down, Johnny. The Dean, Rory, Jess love triangle, Gilmore Girls. Creator Amy Sherman Palladino wasn't thrilled with how this led fans to fixate on Rory's love life. So Rory's got a nice little hold on you now, huh? Jeez. Don't do that. How does it feel? Feels like I'm with Rory and you're not. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sealing George Cooper Sr.'s fate, The Big Bang Theory and Young Sheldon Throughout The Big Bang Theory, we learn various details about Sheldon's father. He liked football, TV, and beer. He once wrestled a bobcat for licorice. He wasn't much of a family man, and he died when Sheldon was 14. Does your dad still live in Texas? No, he died when I was 14. I'm sorry to hear that. So was the man who owned the local liquor store. <laughs> Young Sheldon retconned much of this, turning George Sr. into a much-loved character. Sadly, though, the one thing they didn't backtrack on was his fate. He had a heart attack. He's okay, right? He's gone. In one of his vanity cards, Chuck Lorre admitted he regrets ever deciding that Sheldon lost his father when he was a teenager. Little could he have known back then how attached viewers would become to the character and how difficult it would be for all of us to say goodbye. I didn't say it at his funeral, but I can say it now. I loved my father. I will miss him forever. If you were a showrunner on your favorite TV show, which storyline would you have vetoed? Let us know in the comments. I wish I could tell you I said all those things, but I didn't. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.